Hey there, uh, John here with How to Get Into Drama School. And today we're talking with our student, Casey Landman. Welcome, Casey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. How are you? I'm good. It's beautiful in New York, so hard to complain. Oh, good, good, good. So why don't we start out, um, I'll let you introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, New York, um, and what school you've been accepted into, and maybe uh, one fun fact about you. Okay, I'm Casey. I am from New York, originally from Long Island, but I don't usually lead with that. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I got into the MFA program at USC, Southern California. And thank you. But my fun fact, I can say the alphabet backwards. Oh, wow. Let's, can we hear it? Just for you. Yeah. Okay. And whoever else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. Amazing. So, and oh, that didn't get me into grad school, what did? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Special skills, alphabet backwards, check. It is on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great. It's a really great like uh, opener as well, right? Like certainly gets the conversation started. Oh, I see that you were in this production and then, oh, alphabet backwards. Hmm. Yeah, it's an icebreaker for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, cool. So why don't we, you know, this is an opportunity just for you to share your story and your journey with our audience. And I know that it's super helpful. Um, so again, thank you so much. And um, why don't we start with um, your prior training and background and that kind of thing. Tell us, yeah. you know, I, I know that you went to school um, beforehand. And what was your sort of reasoning behind wanting to go back to drama school? Sure. So I went to New York University's Tisch School of the Arts for undergrad. Um, I graduated in 2019 and I was at their drama school. I, I had like a, a mixed bag of reasons I wanted to go to grad school. Um, I had, a, as you know, I had a pretty unique experience in college because my freshman year at NYU, I was diagnosed with cancer. So there were there was a lot that I couldn't physically keep up with. Um, I was emotionally for the entire four years rather distracted. Yeah. So I think for a long time I knew that going to grad school was something I wanted. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, well, cool. And now you are right. And here I am. <laughs> 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 um, well, great. So, so let's talk about the preparation process then. Um, where did you, when did, let's start with when, when did you start preparing? When did you decide, okay, this is definitely what I want to do, start looking for pieces, all that kind of stuff. I think a lot of us started self-reflecting during, during the pandemic. So I think about a year or into the pandemic, I started doing research just on schools and what you know, that would look like. Um, and then I started looking at actual monologues in May, June of last summer. And then I, I want to say that like our first coaching session was in October. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, right? Yeah, I think so. Because you were part of the acceptance accelerator program, right? Indeed I was. And my acceptance yeah. was accelerated. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Perfect plug. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Okay, so let's talk about monologues then more specifically. Um, I mean, obviously you went to NYU, so you have um, a great background in theater and know a lot of plays, but how difficult was it for finding material? It was, I think, tough because there feels like an extra layer of pressure and stress because you want it to be the right monologues. You want it to show your range. Yeah. Um, so despite being really lucky and having that background and education, I found it, I found it tough to find monologues that I had an emotional connection to that I thought also showcased my range or talent. Yeah. Were any of the pieces, did you have them already sort of in your back pocket or were all of your pieces new this, this, um, audition cycle? All of them were new. Um, okay for so the two contemporary monologues the dramatic piece I actually found through you and Anthony 
you would send like um, an Excel sheet, which yeah, I love Excel. <laughs> <laughs> if anything can be an Excel, I'll make it happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so green flag. And the, the monologue spoke to, it was about this girl who was infertile because she had had cancer and I'm not sure of my fertility because of chemotherapy. So it really spoke to me. Yeah. Um, and I was like, wow. And I never read the play. It was an Australian play. I took all of my self-control not to do an accent, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the comedic piece, the May Queen yeah. that Which we love. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I found because I was just asking anyone and everyone like, have you, have you read a play or done a monologue that you're like, oh, I can see Casey doing this. Um, and my, my really good friend Lizzie was like, yes. And she sent me the play and I read the play and I was like, oh, I was born to be this character. <laughs> In the womb, they were like the May Queen, here she comes. Oh my God. That's so funny that your friend Lizzie was like, hmm, yes, this, this here is Casey. Because if you guys know this piece, well, why don't you uh, describe it to them a little bit so they have an idea? <laughs> yeah, so it's um, Molly Smith Metzler, I believe, is the playwright. She, she also, actually, the, the, the TV Netflix show Made that just came out, she wrote. Oh, wow. um, I didn't that. Okay. Yeah, she's got range because Maid is very different from the May Queen. Yeah. <laughs> the May Queen, um, the character that I did a monologue, she is a young 20 year old who takes herself really seriously and got promoted as manager in this like classic cubicle office nine to five situation. And she sort of has a bit of a breakdown in the monologue where She's setting her expectations very clearly and very aggressively. <laughs> yeah. And Casey was amazing. She was so funny. Every time you did that piece, it was, it was just a delight for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, cool. Um, amazing. I didn't realize that all of your pieces were new that you had, that you had just discovered. Oh, and then let's talk about um, the classical pieces as well, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Because that was an interesting thing for you. Yeah. Yes, William. I hadn't touched Shakespeare, as you know, during my all four years of NYU. I mean, I might have taken like a master class once at college, okay. um, but I had no training in Shakespeare. And I had no idea where to start. So it was really asking like you guys and mentors and former teachers, because even when I was reading Shakespeare and this has changed honestly, since doing the coaching, when I was reading Shakespeare, I was kind of like, you know, when you read a line, you, you've read it, but you're not really knowing anything that happened while you were reading it. Yeah. 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 It was, it was very much that for me. I was like, I don't even know if I like Shakespeare. I can't understand. I felt so stupid reading it so I oftentimes didn't because it felt better to not feel that way yeah so so let's dive into that I'm, I'm curious what um specifically kind of helped to unlock it for you um was there any sp specific exercise or sort of the way that we looked at text and script analysis that kind of helped you or did you watch productions what was sort of your entry point to be able to feel less uh but feel more connected to the material and, and start to understand it in a, in a way that it would be helpful for an actor as opposed to like an academic. Right. I think learning um, scansion was really helpful for me. I didn't know what scansion was. And even now I'm not sure I want to define it. <laughs> I'm worried that I, I don't true, like even now I second guess any of my knowledge. Um, and also, the exercise that you and I did often putting it into my own words, because that's when I truly felt my like version of any character come out. Yeah. Because I wanted, you know, uh, it's been so long since I've done my Shakespeare monologue. I'm trying to think of a line that I would put into my own words. It's not gonna happen, but <laughs> it, it, was, <laughs> it was, um, it was a lot more fun once I could let go of like, it has to be formal and it has to be A, B, or C and just do it like the Casey way. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, paraphrasing is such a helpful tool. It's a help. It's an incredibly helpful tool for me as well. Um, to yeah, to feel like oh yes, while it is written in verse, while it is poetry, these are still human beings going after needs just like we do every day. Um, and and I, I mean, for me, I also think about Shakespeare. Like we talk in metaphor all the time, right? And, uh, and exaggeration and all of that kind of stuff. And this is just on a, an even larger scale. Um, so yeah, thinking about that kind of helps me as well. Um, well, cool. So, so let's talk a, a bit about schools. Um, how did you decide on the number of schools that you were going to apply to, um, all that kind of stuff? What sort of came into your uh, consideration? Yeah. Great question. These are great questions, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I knew for myself that I, I likely wanted to not be in New York because I've never not lived in New York. So with the exception of Juilliard, I, cause you can't not, I, I didn't apply to any New York schools, which crossed off a few because, you know, NYU, Columbia, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, Pace. Um, so that sort of took those out of the equation for me. And then it's interesting because at the beginning of this journey, I thought that Shakespeare was one of the major things I wanted to study and a big component of why I wanted to go yeah. to grad school. But through the audition process, and I, I'm sure we can talk about this later on, I realized that um, that wasn't totally what I wanted out of a grad school, but that did because at the beginning I did think that a lot of the schools I was looking at were geared towards that. So um, San Diego Old Globe. Um, also, I applied to Yale because it's free and it's Yale. Hello, <laughs> John came straight from there. We want to be like John. <laughs> um, you know, all the schools that have, I checked like the Hollywood Reporter, Google, you know, looking at the ones that have the, you know, the education that I really wanted. I was lucky to go to NYU, but I felt like I didn't get to really like hone in on anything because my brain was in 10 different places. Yeah. So I really wanted, I really wanted somewhere that would lend itself to the education, but also like mentors are really important to me. And I wanted to be constant. I never want to be the smartest or most talented person in the room. I wanted to be surrounded by people that were better than me in every way. Yeah. I think that's a that's a really great philosophy because then you're going to continue to learn and and there's yeah. there are a lot of things that you know that uh, are intangible by seeing someone who's farther along and and more trained you're like oh yeah oh that's really interesting um, yeah. I had a similar experience when I first moved to New York actually um, before I went to NYU I took gap year and I studied um, at a studio in New York. And was I was 18 at the time and surrounded by people who were in their 30s. And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Not only was I incredibly intimidated, but I also felt like I learned so much in that single year from all of these people who were working actors, essentially. Um, and it was really amazing before going into NYU. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 I did that. <laughs> it was like it was wild and crazy. <laughs> what studio was it? Um, HB Studio. I study with Carol Rosenfeld, who's amazing. Um, and actually, she's good friends. I think she and Vicki Hart, Vicki is the head of the Meisner um, program at, at NYU. And uh, I want to say that they taught together maybe at Rutgers. I know Carol taught at Rutgers for a while. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> I digress. Yes, we digress. Um, so, so let's talk about the actual audition experience. Um, how was that for you? You can talk about any of the schools that you auditioned for or specifically USC would be great. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just kind of dive in there. What was that whole process like? So USC was actually, I did everything, all of my initial auditions on Zoom. Um, and USC was actually my very first one which is cool. Yeah. And it's so interesting, right? Because I think all of us have had such practice connecting with people on Zoom for better or for worse that it, it almost felt like a really cool medium to have that audition because I could be in my own space. I could do what I had to do 
do my routine in my you know comfort and be able to connect. I also most of my work post grad to now has been film and TV. So the screen is almost like a more friendly medium than an in-person audition, which I haven't had to do very much of in <laughs> recent times. <laughs> so it was, it was really lovely. We were put in um, like a group Zoom. So the people that were auditioning that day and Ramon who helps, he has a better title than what I am about to say what his title is, but he's, he works at admissions for this, so for the drama school and facilitates like everything. He's awesome. And he, you know, told us all to take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, which was really nice because I needed it. And he's, you know, told us what the itinerary for the day would be, which would essentially, they would tell us when we're on deck, they would check our microphone and picture, and then they would send us in a breakout room with two of the faculty who were unbelievable. And like to the fact that I could feel that through a screen was crazy. Um, they had a great sense of humor, which it's almost like with dating. I, in my day job, I'm a matchmaker. So I'm always relating things to dating. Um, but <laughs> um, it's, you know, it was a really cool reminder that they're trying me on and I'm trying them on. And right away, like we had banter and I had made a little joke because God forbid, I don't use that as a coping mechanism. And they laughed and it was just, it was super fun. And after I did the monologues, cause we talked, did the monologues and we talked some more. They were so kind and lovely and open and I loved them for real. It was cool. Amazing. So was it, so how many audition, what was the audition process like? Were there callbacks after that or was it just this single audition? How, how did that all go? So for USC, it was just a single audition and then they were going to inform us if we got invited to the callback weekend. Okay. Which I was. Well, you know, you know, I, it's, yeah, so which I was. And so um, that was, so the audition on Zoom was the end of January. Callback weekend was the first weekend of March. So I had all of those other Zoom auditions. And then the callback weekend, should I, should I share about it? Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, I'm sure people would be interested to hear how it all went and, and what was required of you and how long and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so they sent us information on what would be required of us on February 17th, I think. I don't know why I know that. And it basically, it said um, to have those monologues prepared, you might not be, need to use them. It's gonna be like very workshop based. You'll be working with, it's an opportunity to sort of try on USC essentially and be on campus, work with different teachers and to have a piece of text, it could be from anything, it could be self-written that you know really, really well to play around with. Um, they also had us fill out a questionnaire for the other people there that weekend to get to know each other. Oh, cool. Which I liked. Um, and then the weekend itself was a roller coaster. There were about 30 something people. They only accept 10 people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and the first day was an optional campus tour. I've also, this was my first time in Los Angeles. I had never been prior. Um, so I like, as Miley Cyrus says, hopped off the plane at LAX with my dream and my cardigan, but not really because it was cold in New York and then it was hot, whatever. But there were palm trees coming off of the plane, which blew my mind. I've, I just, palm trees in a city were so exciting to me. And I'm getting such, so tangented, so, yes. So I got to the, the optional campus tour and I, I actually remember texting you being like, would you have time to talk? Because I was feeling like really overwhelmed. I, I was all of a sudden I was meeting these folks that were, um, they were like around my age and or younger. And I was like, oh no, like, in my mind, I thought that grad school would be like so like people way older than me. And I was like, does this mean this isn't the place for me? And I had a bit of a mental breakdown in the hotel that night. But then the next day was day one of the callback weekend. 
and I fell in love. The faculty is really what like sold me. They, whenever they spoke, it was, it was like you could hear a pin drop. They were so intentional and so specific and so passionate about what they do and they're all working actors. So if they are faculty, like there's pros and cons to that, sure, because they'll you know have to leave to work, but there's something really special about learning from people that are inherently learning because they're in it right now. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, amazing. Yeah. So that, so, so let's talk about, so you said you had a piece of material that you needed to know really well. Was that one of the monologues that you had done earlier or did you choose something new? I memorized four different things, just in case. <laughs> four additional things, in addition to the four pieces that you had memorized for the initial audition. One of them was the May Queen, because I, I had only used the May Queen once in all of my auditions, and the USC wasn't one of them, so I wanted to use it. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, and then one was from Our Town. One was a self-written piece. One... They ended up not really needing it. So oh. it was, it was, I think I did 20 seconds of the May Queen during um, an exercise with David Warshawski, the head of the program. But I just, I didn't know what kind of text we, we would need and when we would be doing it. And I wanted the freedom to be like, I'm feeling this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think that's a really smart, uh, smart decision on your part as well. Okay. So, so how many days was it? So you had day one, um, was it three days or? It was two days with an optional campus tour at the beginning. Okay, okay, cool. And then did most of it consist of different classes with different faculty members or how, how was that sort of process? Yeah, so it started with like, you know, everyone introducing themselves and then we went right into Alexandra Billings um, movement class which was magical. And then we did a voice class and then we had lunch somewhere in there. And then we did an acting class and then that we did a Q and A with the faculty and that took us to like 7 PM. Um, and I was also on like Eastern standard time. So it was seven and I passed out by nine. I was, <laughs> I was exhausted. And then the next day we did improv which was so scary. <laughs> and then we had group interviews. So they put us into groups of three or four. Okay. And then we would have interviews with the faculty in those groups. Oh, wow. And once you did that, you were free to leave. Interesting. So were most of the classes with all 30 of the people or did they divide you guys up? They didn't divide us up. Okay. Um, we, well, actually in the acting class, they did divide us up into three groups, but when you weren't working, you were either silently on deck or silently on deck to be on deck. So you were very aware and um, respectful of the work being done. Okay. Okay, cool. I want to, um, this is because I know you and I, we work together in your process. I sort of want to go back to the initial audition just slightly because yeah. you said something really interesting about um, Zoom and how much freedom you ended up having because you were in your space and you could do whatever you want. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you utilize that um, like to your advantage and, and how that made you feel more comfortable or less comfortable? I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of hinting at something that I know that you do and I think it would be helpful for our audience uh, our audience to hear right that you really took agency over your audition and did what you needed to prepare and didn't worry about oh I need to be polite or I need to like be right or whatever that is right um, mm -hmm. and I think it was really great and and it was so funny because you asked me permission in our session you were like do you mind if I do this and I was like um please please do this <laughs> And please do it in all of your auditions as well. <laughs> Which I did. And um, basically, I, I found that my emotional self is very connected to my, my release on voice. Um, so what I do, I would do my Shakespeare, Troilus and Cressida, which was a lot more 
upbeat and free, which almost organically made me sort of release a little. And then let's say you were the faculty or auditor, whoever you may be, I would say, um, well, I was standing, so I'd take down my computer and be like, oh, now I'm sitting. Um, would it be okay with you if I muted my microphone? I just need to let out a sound. It might be a little loud. And they were like, yeah. And then I did. And I really, truly screamed, um, <laughs> truly screamed. And it got me where I needed to be. And I think once you gave me permission in our session, which is also a really great part of the coaching process is learning what we need to get there yeah. each time. Yeah. Once you gave me permission, I gave myself the permission and it, it changed the work. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, it is really, you know, auditioning is tough, you know, it's like, and especially, you know, you're going from Troilus and Cresta and it's like, you're in love and the stakes are a, um, romance, right? And there's all of that. And then suddenly you're going to this other piece, the seed, which the stakes are much darker, right? Much heavier. And it's a, and it's a really fast turn that you, they're asking you to make in these auditions. Um, and figuring out what really works for you best um, is important. I mean, that's why you do the preparation so that you can go, okay, I can immediately get there right? Because, you know, that's later in the play, the stakes are really high, right? And you don't have the benefit of, you know, the first hour and a half of the play to get to that moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. So learning what works specifically for you is, is really crucial. Um, and it was awesome to see you, uh, to see you do that and just like take the space, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and because that's, that's what I've learned. I mean, that's what I did in my audition for Yale as well. I was like, which was in person and certainly coming from a film and TV background as well. There are a lot of do's and don'ts in an audition room with casting directors, <laughs> you know, like you would never <laughs> just say this now, you would never want to just start screaming, be like, hold on, before you turn the camera on, I'm going to scream. <laughs> 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 like, why don't you exit the building? <laughs> I'm imagining myself being like, I'm Casey Landman. <laughs> like, yeah. here, here are my profiles. <laughs> and then you just rage into the, oh my God, into the camera. Yeah. So you would never do something like that in that setting, right? But because this is <laughs> a drama school audition, right? Because they're interested in seeing your process. And because, you know, it's, this isn't a commercial audition, the stakes are super high in this, in this monologue that you're about to do. It's a, it's a different situation. Um, and you want to give yourself the freedom to do that. And I find that a lot of people, um, you know, myself included, get sometimes get too scared to like really go for it. Right. And be yeah, like, Oh, and then, and then you leave the audition feeling like, Oh, I wish that I had, you know, really gone for it. You know, why did I do that? You know? So, yeah. um, so I think it's really, really wonderful. And it was great to see that, that journey as well. <laughs> for you. Um, well, let's talk about the, the moment that you got accepted. How was it? What was it like? It was so weird. I, I think that like, I, you know, when you, you get a taste of something and then you start actually really wanting it. And then you're like, what if I don't, um, that it's, I was so anxious that when I received the letter, I had to read it over a few times. Um, and then in full transparency, because I think that's, an, you know, to be totally candid with our audience, the first thing I started thinking about was finance. Um, yeah. and being like, okay, this is something I want. I knew that if I got into USC, that is where I would go. Um, especially because it's very geared towards like the type of career I would, I think I would like for myself, very film and TV oriented, um, yeah. et cetera. So immediately I started thinking about student loans and making sure that this was something I could do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, moving across the country and, and there's a lot of changes as well. Um, so I totally hear that for sure. Um, so let's talk about, oh, I just, I have a question, like in terms of acting tools, um, what do you think 
makes a really great um, audition. Ooh. In terms of acting tools, what do I think makes a good audition? Yeah, or what what really sustain, sustained you through all of these auditions, especially because I know that you had a bunch back to back to back um, via Zoom. Um, just curious what really helped you feel the most connected the whole time, anything that you learned um, or anything that you would do differently now having gone through the process, you know, is there something that you were like, oh, you know what, if I ever did this again, this is what I would probably change for myself. Two things that I did that I'm really glad I did and I would certainly encourage others to do should it feel good for them. I always made sure to do my monologues, all four of them, once before the audition um, to get it out, like almost like first pancake, you know, like you throw out the first pancake. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I would record them so I could watch them back. Okay. So I would do a Zoom call with myself and record them and would have a list of notes that you and I had talked about and like sort of look I'm very analytical. So this works very much for my type A brain. I would look sort of at what I did and if it was received the way I wanted it to be received. Yeah. And I also do this thing, I do it in life where I just sort of check in with myself because my number one answer to what makes a great audition is being present, but it's like almost impossible when you're so freaking anxious and nervous and the stakes <laughs> feel really high. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I do this thing where I check in with myself and I say like, I'm feeling nervous, now what? I'm feeling silly, now what? I'm feeling self-conscious, now what? And I just sort of keep trying to check in on how I'm feeling and how it's changing. It's a little like ooey ooey, but I like it. No, I mean, I think that's great because it really helps you to be, pre like you said, it helps you to be present in the moment with what the truth is right? Yeah. As opposed to like what you want to be happening. It's like, okay, what's actually happening? Because you can't really, in order to transform into these other circumstances, you need to start from where you actually are. Right? Yeah. Um, we had a teacher at, at Yale would call it the already. <laughs> it's where mm. you already are. And then from there, you can, you know, it's going to change, right? In every moment, you're, you're constantly changing. Um, but, but being able to honor where you actually are is really important. And especially for, for anyone who deals with performance anxiety, it, that is a really great tool to get you grounded, um, which is amazing. It's something else that I remember that you would do is that we came to a point where you were rehearsing your pieces over and over and over and over again. Can you talk about that a little bit and sort of what you learned there for yourself yeah, specifically? Certainly. So because I'm so type A and I love preparing, I, I did it, I would write down my monologues every day, once a day minimum, so that I would ensure that they remain memorized and I would do them at least once a day. And it got to a point where I was overdoing it and I would get into a, a session with you and I would sort of feel like really disconnected. I'd be forcing things. It didn't feel grounded or real. It felt very rehearsed because it was. Yeah. And I remember like we had decided on my homework being not to touch it for a yeah. week, which was so hard. For me. <laughs> yeah. I would literally like prior to that, I would be in the shower, like, you know, whatever my lines were. I can't remember any of my Shakespeare monologue right now. <laughs> yeah. You were to give me the first line, I'd remember it, but I can't. So <laughs> but I'd be in the shower. And hard, it, hard to seem one, but I was one, my Lord, right? Isn't that yes, the, the, the very first, oh, pardon me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be doing that in the shower. Instead of like singing, I would do my monologue. So that first week where I couldn't touch it, was hard, but then the first time I did it was in a session with you and it was worlds different. Yeah, yeah, I remember that as well. It's funny, I, I, that teacher, Carol Rosenfeld that I worked with before I went to NYU uh, did that to me because I'd been over rehearsing this scene and I'd put it up several weeks in a row and she was like, 
John, you must stop. You must. <laughs> Your notes for this week is you are not allowed to rehearse. And then in seven days, you will put the scene up again. And I was, and it was night and day. It was like all of a sudden my impulses came back and I was in my body again and not overanalyzing. And yeah, that can be a really helpful tool. Um, especially, you know, when you start preparing for an audition like this months and months in advance, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, Anthony and I always talk about, you know, finding material that you feel so personally connected to that's going to sustain you through that whole process and not feel like, oh, and now I'm petering out, right? Um, and that's one way to sort of reinvigorate. Yeah. Um, thank you again and congratulations. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you. And you'll be, we'll be in the same, in the same city now. So we'll actually be close. <laughs> I can meet you in person. Isn't that crazy that we've done such intimate, beautiful work together and I've never, I'm like, hi. Yeah, I know. It's wild. It's so wild. You know, these. You should know I'm short. I'm five one <laughs> and three fourths. Oh wow! Oh wow! I didn't realize that. <laughs> my big personality in my eyes. You'd think like she's bigger, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, again, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited to see it, hear how everything goes for you, um, and. Yeah, and have a wonderful time. I will talk to you soon when you fly out here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Don. <laughs>